Less than five is on isotopes and average atomic mass. So we're going to talk about isotopes and average atomic mass. So what is an isotope? Isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons, so each element has a very specific number of protons that we said in previous videos, but they differ in the number of neutrons. So if you look at lithium in the right of the screen, you'll see that there's three different lithiums. They all have the same atomic number, so the same number of protons, same number of electrons, but they have a different mass, and the different mass is due to the different number of neutrons. So in isotopes, guys, there's um, isotopes for every element on the periodic table. So of the 81 stable elements of the periodic table, those that are not radioactive, there are about 275. So when we look at our periodic table, we're just looking at the most common ones. So of over 800 radioactive isotopes, a lot of them are going to be synthetic, which is man-made, and a lot are also found naturally breaking down in our atmosphere and the dirt. And the chemical properties of isotopes of a single element tend to be nearly identical. So iron, as you know, is magnetic, but all isotopes of iron, they are all magnetic. So when you're writing isotopic notation, you're going to use the correct atomic number that is shown in the reference table. And then you're going to have the atomic mass that may or may not be different from that on the periodic table. The atomic mass in this case will be given to you in the question or specifically in the name of that isotope. So right now you'll notice that you have six different isotopes. You have carbon-12 and carbon-14. Both of them are the element and its mass number. You know what the mass number means. Why don't they show the atomic number though? They don't show the atomic number, I believe, because it's assumed by the name of the element. Got it. So carbon has its own atomic number, as does bismuth and uranium. Okay? So right now we want you guys to pause the videos, and using the notes that you just took down, write down the isotopic notation for the carbons, the bismuth, and the uranium isotopes. So if you did it correctly, your isotopic notation should look something like this. Notice that just the mass numbers are going to be different. Mm -hmm. The symbols remain the same for the, the, the elements that are the same. And their atomic numbers, the number in the bottom left-hand corner, also stays the same. So looking at this chart, let's think about the different isotopes of hydrogen. It's called protium, deuterium, and tritium. And you'll notice that it's hydrogen with a mass of 1, hydrogen with a mass of 2, and hydrogen with a mass of 3. So right now, why don't you guys pause the video, write down the isotopic symbol, the number of protons, neutrons, electrons, and... AMU, which is the average, mass. and AMU, which is the atomic mass unit, which is just the mass of these isotopes. So you should have gone for, for hydrogen 1. The isotope is hydrogen with the 1 in the top left corner. 1 proton, 0 neutrons, 1 electron, and when you figure out the atomic mass, which is the protons plus the neutrons, you get 1. Uh, notice that deuterium, which is hydrogen 2, ends up with a 2 um, because it has one more neutron. Uh, and then tritium, which is hydrogen 3, has two more neutrons than hydrogen 1 and ends up with a mass of 3. Notice that the masses are written in red in the isotopic symbol. This is showing that they're isotopes because they have the same number of protons, but they differ in the amount of neutrons. And again, same number of protons, same number of electrons, because they're electrically neutral. These are all neutral. These are not ions. Yeah. And again, these are just what we call Bohr models, which is coming up in a future video. And this is just showing you that they have the same number of electrons and protons in every picture, but the only thing that's changing is the amount of neutrons, which is what an isotope is. So right now, we want you guys to pause the video and looking at these isotopes, tell us how many neutrons are in these four different samples. If you have forgotten, check lesson three. So you'll notice when you look at the math on the right hand side, you're taking the mass number or the isotopic mass and you're subtracting it from its atomic number. So for zirconium 93, an isotope, you're subtracting 93 from 40, you have 53 neutrons. For vanadium 49, you subtract 49 from 23 and you have 26 neutrons. For Neptunium 241, you're subtracting 241 from 93, 
giving you 148 neutrons. And for neon 18, you're subtracting 18 from 10, telling you that you only have 8 neutrons. So average atomic mass is the weighted average of all the elements isotopes based on their natural abundance. So you're only looking at the natural isotopes, not the ones that are synthetic. Now the periodic table contains the weighted averages of all elements isotopes. That's why we have an isotopic mass that is not a perfect whole number. So if you look at carbon, for instance, um, in this picture it's on the bottom, but in your reference table it's on the top left corner, it'll say 12.011. The 12.011 is the weighted average of all of carbon's natural isotopes. Remember, you can't have 0 0.11 of anything if it's a subatomic particle. You can either have it or you don't have it. So these are averages. So when you look at abundance, abundance can be written in two different ways. We can write it as a percent or we can just write it as a decimal. So if you have it as a percent, you just divide by 100 to get the decimal abundance. But if you get it as a decimal abundance, you could just multiply it by 100 to get the percent abundance. So why are we, why do we need the percent abundance? Or why do we need abundance in general? We're gonna be using the abundance actually in a calculation in a second to figure out the average atomic mass based on the natural abundance of these different isotopes. So we're gonna multiply each isotope's mass by its decimal abundance. So again, the decimal abundance. Uh, if your abundance is a percent, then we're gonna divide by 100 like we said earlier. And then we're just going to add all these values together. So let's actually see what that looks like in a problem. So before we do that, let's go to reference table T, which is the very, very end where your, all your formulas are. And we suggest that you definitely write down this formula. You can say that AAM, or average atomic mass, is equal to, and as you see in brackets, isotope mass times percent divided by 100, plus, in its own brackets, isotope mass times 100, in its own brackets, isotope mass times percent over 100. Now this is only for two isotopes. If you add three isotopes, you would extend it to have another whole bracket of isotopic mass times percent over 100. If you have four or five, you keep doing this exact same principle for every isotope. Correct. Okay, so here's an example. You are given a sample containing 98% carbon-12 and 2% carbon-13. What is the average or relative atomic mass of the element? So um, pause the video and try to complete this on your own first. So the first thing we have to do is find the two different abundances. As you're noticing, we have percent abundance, 98% and 2%. The number 12 is going to be the mass of the isotope. So as you see, you're taking 98% or just 98, and you're multiplying that by 12, and then you're going to divide that answer by 100. So why do we divide by 100 again? Because we want to take our percentage and bring it down into a decimal form. Because percent is actually not something you can use in mathematics. It has to be converted before you use I call them fake numbers. Fake numbers. Yeah. Mm. Like um, my friends. <laughs> fake numbers like my friends. Um, so just to let you know, if you set this up correctly, that's great. But um, in future questions, sometimes they give you a more exact mass for the isotope given. If they give you more exact mass, use the more exact mass. So when you do the math of 98 times 12, you're noticing it's 1,176 over 100. And when you take 2 times 13, it's 26 over 100. Then you're going to divide both of those in parentheses by 100. And you should notice that you get 11.76 plus 0 0.26. And you add the two together, and your average atomic mass is 12.02. So remember that this is still considered an average, just like when we take averages in class. Uh, so the number that you receive as a final answer has to be between the smallest mass and the largest mass. So when you look at 12.02, you have to ask yourself, is this between carbon 12's mass and carbon 13's mass? If it's not, then you did something wrong in your math. So if your answer was like 15, 3,000, you would be very, very, very wrong. Right. So check your work. Now let's try this one. Copper occurs naturally as either the isotope copper 63 or copper 65. Which of these two isotopes is going to be more abundant? You may want to look at your periodic table. That's my only hint. Look 
to your periodic table and tell us which one is going to be more abundant. Can I give my hint? Go ahead. My hint was just said to you in the last slide. Ah. So the first thing you have to do is find copper in the periodic table. And when you do, you will notice that its average mass is 63.546. You then have to determine if the average mass is closer to what percent. So is 63.546 closer to 63 or 65? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that on a number scale. 63 on the left, 65 on the right, and obviously there's that magical number 64 in the middle. 63.546 atomic mass units is way more closer to 63 than it is 65. Way more. Way more. <laughs> so your answer in this case would be that copper 63 is your right answer. Sometimes these problems are going to be a little bit more challenging than others. So in this problem we have that copper has two naturally occurring isotopes. We have copper 63 and its atomic mass is very specific. 62.9296 AMU and it has an abundance of 69.15%. We want to figure out the atomic mass of the second isotope, and we want to know its isotopic notation. So right off the bat, we know a very specific atomic mass unit, and we know a percentage. If this is only out of two different isotopes, we have to figure out first what is that other percent. Mm. So there are some steps for solving these harder average atomic mass problems. Right. So the first step is determine the average atomic mass of the element. So remember, the average atomic mass can be found on the periodic table. Then determine the percent abundance of the not listed isotope. Remember, percent abundance is out of 100 in total, so you need to do the subtraction there. And then plug the values, whatever values you have, into the atomic mass formula and just solve backwards in a way. Reflect in the notes on this lesson to determine is the iso what the isotope notation would be. So, hopefully you guys will pause the video right now and give these questions a shot. So the first thing you have to do is calculate the average mass, which is simple. You just have to look it up on the periodic table. So copper again is 63.546. You then subtract for the second part that we're doing is we're subtracting 100% from the percentage of the very first isotope, which is given to you in the question as 69.15. The difference is 30.85. That's the percent of isotope number two. We then use the uh, average atomic mass formula, plugging in all the variables that we know. Notice the red X. The red X is supposed to signify the unknown mass of our second isotope. Everything else has been given to you. If this looks challenging, just remember to do this step by step. PEMDAS. Okay. Our suggestion is to do everything in the black font in the first parentheses on the left of the equation. So you'll notice after you simplify everything that you get your average atomic mass is equal to 43.51 plus 0.3085x. Then you subtract 43.15 from both sides, giving you 20.04, and that is now equal to 0.3085x. You divide both sides by 0.3085, leaving x by itself, and you notice that you should get 64.96 AMU. Alrighty, we know this seems like a lot, but that's why we're going to be covering this topic heavily in class in the next couple days. So hopefully you guys will rewatch this video twice. Bye bye. Bye. Oh yeah, that's the average. Uh, that's the isotopic <laughs> notation. Peace.